Hi guys, how are you? I'm doing a video today on quick fire questions on the waves topic in physics. So I'm going to be looking at the structure of a wave, looking at definitions such as amplitude, frequency, how you calculate wave speed, and I'm probably going to talk about the electromagnetic spectrum too. So yeah, quite a busy video. So like my other quick fire questions, what you want to do is pause it after I ask a question, say your answer out loud or in your head or write it down and then start my video again and listen to my answer and see if your answers match. So, we'll start with the basics of waves then, so the diagram. First of all, what is the amplitude of a wave? And remember, that's the distance from where there's no disturbance, so the centre line, to the highest point, so the peak, or from that middle line to the trough. So it's the maximum disturbance seen by a wave. Um, what is the frequency of a wave? It's the number of waves per second. What is the unit of frequency? And remember that is hertz. Another thing we like to look at is the pitch, because remember frequency and pitch are the same thing, but what does pitch actually mean? Well, pitch is how high or how low a musical note is. Next up, how do you calculate wave speed? Well, that's frequency times wavelength. So how, therefore, do you calculate wavelength? Wavelength is calculated by doing speed of the wave divided by frequency. What are the two types of wave? And those are longitudinal and transverse waves. What is the definition of a longitudinal wave? And you want to see it say here that vibrations occur parallel to the direction in which the wave is travelling. So give some key longitudinal wave examples. And that is mostly sound waves, to be honest. That's really what you want to be specifying here. What is a transverse wave? This time, vibrations occur perpendicular or at right angles to the direction in which the wave is travelling. Give some key examples of transverse waves. You're looking at water waves, all members of the electromagnetic spectrum, so you could name X-rays or visible light. Um, and I swear there's more, like the waves made by Slinky, but I feel like that's a terrible answer. So yeah, just name EM waves like light waves for that. If they ask you what diffraction is, what would you say then? Remember that diffraction is the spreading out of waves when they pass through a boundary. What is refraction? Remember that's when a wave bends or changes direction, and that's due to a change in its speed when it passes from one medium into another, which is why when you see um, a light wave coming into a glass block, you'll see it bend. So just to reiterate, it's when a light ray, or any ray, actually changes direction due to change of speed as it enters a new medium. Let's look now at the EM spectrum, the electromagnetic spectrum. So remember that's a family of waves, and they have several things in common. So can you name four things they have in common? So all EM waves transfer energy they travel at the speed of light, which is 300 million meters per second. They are all transverse waves, and they can all be refracted, refracted, reflected, and diffracted. And so for some of you guys, that will be worth quite a lot of marks in your exam, so do try and remember that. Next up, list the order of waves starting from the highest frequency going down to the lowest frequency. So remember, frequency is the number of waves per second. So highest frequency is where the waves do this, lowest frequency is where the waves do that. So if we start at the highest frequency, it's gamma rays, then it goes X-rays, ultraviolet, visible light, infrared, microwaves, radio waves. Let's look at it from another approach. So starting with the longest wavelength, give the order of EM waves starting from the longest wavelength. So again, that's where the two peaks are furthest apart. So we're gonna start at radio waves, We'll go down to microwaves, infrared, visible light, ultraviolet, x-rays, gamma rays. Give two uses of gamma rays. Well, they are used to sterilize surgical equipment and to kill cancer. What is the use of x-rays? Well, that's for viewing um, inside your body, so looking at bones, for example. Give some uses of ultraviolet. So you can say here it's to check that banknotes haven't been forged, or the more obvious choice here is to say to use in sunbeds and for tanning. Infrared radiation, what's its use? Okay, this is an interesting one. 
You can say that you use it in remote controls because that's what you find in like your TV remote which will turn on the TV so it's used in communication or you can say it's used for cooking. What are the uses of microwaves? Obviously microwaves are used for cooking and microwaves and again they're used in communication because it's actually what's used in satellite communication. So if they ask you which rays can be used in communication, you can list quite a few of them. You can say microwaves, you could say infrared, you can even say visible light and you can say radio waves. What is ultrasound? Remember ultrasound is sound with a very high frequency, so that frequency is above the range of human hearing and it is above 20,000 hertz. Okay, I'm going to get more complicated now, so turn off if you don't need this. But explain what happens when a light ray enters a glass block. So you want to say that as the light ray enters the glass block, it bends towards the normal. And remember the normal is the line dotted, imaginary line drawn at 90 degrees to the surface. And then it comes through the glass block and then it exits the glass block where it then bends away from the normal. So what you see is the ray coming in which is the instant ray and the refracted ray are parallel to each other. What is the formula used for calculating the refractive index? Well that is n equals sine i over sine r, so you just need to be prepared to input the correct numbers into that. We're going to now look at the critical angle. So what is the critical angle? Remember this is the angle of incidence where if you literally go a tiny bit above the critical angle what you find is that all the light is totally internally reflected. So below the critical angle you'll see that the light is refracted and reflected. At the critical angle you'll see that the light ray passes along the boundary of the substance and then if you exceed or go over the critical angle you get total internal reflection. So if they ask you where you can find this useful thing in everyday life you can talk about optical fibres and you can talk about endoscopes because remember that the way optical fibres transmit information is by the light ray bouncing inside the glass tube lots and lots of times. It doesn't escape and that's due to total internal reflection. Right, I think that's long enough. I'm not going to say anything else. I'll be back soon with another video. I hope your vision is going well guys and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and like this video if you found it useful. Bye!